Hello, serious survivor here. This is the next installment in the Apocalypse Tips series. This is installment 5A. This video series will focus on the skills, the gear, and the tools that will aid in a wilderness survival situation. We're focusing on having to bug out from your current location and having to make do with just a few simple tools. Wilderness survival can be accomplished if you have the skill set that is necessary. Remember, skills can never be replaced, but gear can increase your chances of survival tremendously. Knowledge is the key. The more you know, the further you go. These items are easily attainable and very affordable. So we're gonna look at building a bug out kit for the wilderness survival here. We're gonna focus on the most important items that you can put in your bug out bag or bug out kit. When putting together a kit or a bag, take into consideration certain factors. First, your own strength and endurance. This will be different for everyone. Also, different areas of the world will need different types of supplies. The series number five of the Apocalypse Tips will focus on the supplies and skills needed to survive mountainous, forest, and wilderness environments. Be familiar with your particular region and the regions you may be traveling through. So let's get started. 10. Books and Manuals Survival is a difficult task when one is not properly prepared or trained. In the hustle and bustle of our modern, fast-paced, technology-dependent lives, having the time to dedicate to training may be a commodity some folks don't have the luxury to afford. Books or manuals are an excellent source of knowledge and techniques, and these are usually fairly small in size and fit easily into your bag or pack. These manuals can be a wealth of information and literally a lifesaver in desperate times. There are many different types of survival manuals commonly available and affordably priced. I would recommend at least three types. A book on plant life and vegetation, one that distinguishes and differentiates between the types of edible plants you may find in your area and the poisonous or toxic vegetation that may be difficult to determine without the proper training, experience, or resources. These types of botanical books usually have medicinal purposes and applications for these types of plants and vegetation also. A second type of book would be a military field guide. These manuals offer detailed information on everything from map reading and land navigation to ambush tactics to building a shelter and finding concealment. Some manuals also have good information on trapping and hunting wild game. A third type of manual would be worth its weight in gold. This would be a detailed first aid manual. For obvious reasons, the third would definitely increase your chances for long-term survival. Fire. Making fire is one of the most essential survival skills of all time that one can possess. The concept of fire making is simple, yet without practice can be extremely difficult, especially in harsh conditions, such as extreme cold or wet and rainy environments. A minimum of three ways to make fire is recommended, and since you're preparing your bug out bag in advance, you can include a few of the easy, convenient options, such as lighters and waterproof matches. Also, be sure to include devices such as a fire steel or magnesium block, which will generate sparks of hot metal, even in the harshest of weather conditions. Besides these items, you will need to pack some tinder and kindling, which will also be necessary for fueling the initial flame. You can buy tinder from any outdoor store, but cotton balls soaked in petroleum jelly work extremely well. Also keep in mind that pine tree sap is also a convenient accelerant that can be found easily in the wilderness. For long-term survival, these items will eventually be exhausted. The primitive means or skills of making fire are an absolute necessity. Without fire making capabilities, boiling water and cooking food would not be possible, thus increasing the difficulty of long-term survival. Fire also provides benefits such as keeping away certain insect types, providing light and warmth for your shelter by heating rocks on the fire and placing them in your shelter. 8. First Aid Cuts occur and scratches happen, and we know that when they do, serious infections can often occur, which can result in fever, sickness, and even death. First aid supplies and skills may very well determine just how long you will survive. Without these, life can and usually will be much shorter. Whether you build your own kit from scratch or buy a pre-made store-bought kit, make sure it includes the most commonly used items, such as adhesive bandages, knuckle bandages, butterfly closures, gauze dressing, and 
antibiotic ointment, burn cream, aspirin, ibuprofen. Now this is something to be tailored to your specific needs. You know yourself better than anyone else. Make sure to include items that will also help in caring for any family or friends that you may be tasked with providing for. Most items in your bug out kit can be obtained fairly inexpensively. This is one that I personally don't mind spending just a little bit extra on. But for a simple first aid kit with basic supplies, this is actually a relatively cheaper part of your overall supplies. I'll leave links to several good sites below in the description that have excellent kits at good prices. Check them out. Seven, food and utensils. Carrying a long-term food supply with you when you bug out probably won't be an option simply due to the weight and volume of space that food will take up in your bag. But having a short-term supply of food would definitely make the first few days a little more bearable while we adjust to the new lifestyle that has been thrust upon us. Keep in mind that in an emergency situation or bug out situation, especially if you are on foot, a person's body will burn more calories than they may be accustomed to doing. When determining an adequate food supply to take, make sure to choose items that have the necessary amount of calories and nutrition, energy bars, sugar filled snacks, snacks with carbs, foods such as that and filling high calorie foods are always a good choice. Don't pack food that your body may have a hard time digesting or food that spoils quickly. Make sure to rotate it out of your bag on a regular basis and replenish it with fresh supplies. There are multitudes of good choices in this area on the market. Also, utensils are extremely important. After your initial food supply is gone, the utensils you bring will still be a very important part of making survival easier. It's hard to boil water, cook food, and produce things such as pine needle tea or dandelion root tea as a coffee substitute if you don't have the utensils to do so. There are many good kits on the market in this area, and most are very reasonably priced. Water. Without it, nothing else matters. Although it is quite feasible to bring a three to five day supply with you, at an average of about eight pounds per gallon, it will be difficult physically to carry any substantial amount of water with you. With that being said, a means of water purification is going to be necessary. There are many types on the market. These range from tablets to drops, filtered bottles to gravity feeds, solar stills to bark filters. A good suggestion for this area is to use a filtered bottle there are some powerful filters on the market that can filter everything from solid particles to radioactive contamination. Bring the bottle, but use your other skills, such as building fire, to provide a means of purification without cutting into the lifespan of your water filter. Use your bottle or filter only when necessary. Always use the primitive method of filtering through cloth and boiling whenever possible. We can always build a fire, but once that water filter has passed its life expectancy, it's useless. Five. Extra clothing may not be the first thought for some. It would seem they may just take up extra and valuable space in your bag. And now if you try rolling up your extra clothes instead of folding them, they can be rolled much tighter and they do tend to take up a lot less space that way. This is important because when clothing is worn for a length of time under warm or damp conditions, it can cause severe skin issues from fungus and exposure. And these can include what's called trench foot, which can lead up to gangrene. Try to have at least one change of pants, two shirts, cold weather gear if necessary, two pairs of undergarments, and two extra pairs of socks. The worst type of socks you can wear are cotton socks. Cotton is a naturally occurring polymer with a molecular structure that contains negatively charged ion 4, which attracts water molecules. Cotton can absorb about 25 times its weight in water. If you don't normally wear hiking boots or such, then keep a pair in your bag so that you have them when and if you ever have to bug out. Tent, shelter, blanket, sleeping bag or such. This is an important item or items. If you have the manuals or books that we talked about earlier or have the knowledge and skills, then shelter will be something you'll be able to build even though one may possess the skills and recognize the easily obtainable materials to provide shelter in the wild until something more permanent can be developed. There are many types of these on the market, more than we could ever talk about here, and it boils down to knowing your environment and what conditions the weather may present there and prepping accordingly. Three, 
rope, line. Having rope, line, or cordage will prove itself useful in many different ways and circumstances. Usually a strong paracord will handle most applications you may encounter in the wilderness. Line will be helpful for multiple reasons, to secure firewood together, to carry back to camp, for securing a shelter, for securing bedrolls or tents, or hanging food off the ground at night. Helping provide passage across rivers and streams if it's strong enough and used properly. Setting traps and nets. Helping drag heavier objects and more. Most experienced survivalists and preppers keep a strong line or rope on hand. 2. Firearm A firearm may be a debatable subject for some. For me, I consider it a necessity in a bug out situation. Because if we are bugging out, then shit's already hit the fan. There's no telling who or what may approach you. Possessing a firearm in a post-apocalyptic scenario almost seems as though it would be a part of everyone's daily outfit. In an environment where civility and civilization have all but disappeared in the vast confusion of a desperate new reality that has taken hold of the world and changed it, along with us, forever, the simplest of needs becomes the most difficult of tasks. A firearm will offer the ability to hunt and sustain your hunger. Besides the hunting benefits, the aspect of self-defense and self-preservation is a right, and in a time of chaos may only be enforceable and maintained with the presence and possible use of a firearm or firearms. There is also the factor of wild animals in a wilderness environment. If people are bugging out to the more desolate wilderness regions or forest regions, then the wildlife there will be impacted and food chains will be disrupted. As the hunger in humans increase, so will the hunger in predators. A firearm is a valid part of any bug out gear, kit, EDC, or others. If you cannot own one or do not have the means to own one, then at least arm yourself with a bow, crossbow, or the item that we talk about next. 1. Fixed Blade Knife A good fixed blade knife is one of the most important tools, if not the most important, that a person needs in a survival situation. This is an item that would be worth paying more for. A knife is used for everything from splitting wood, sawing small trees, if it has a serrated blade, cutting bait, cleaning game, crafting items, striking a fire steel, shaving magnesium, making tinder, self-defense, and much more. There are thousands of different knives on the market. A knife is a personal item or weapon. Everyone will have a different taste and feel for their knife. This is an item that I shop around for. I personally have more knives than I can say, but when it comes to a survival knife, I like the fixed blade K-Bar with a partially serrated blade. I find it strong, capable, and reliable. I put mine through some hard times and it's still the best one I've ever had. Everyone will have their favorite type or favorite one, but this is an item that I put a lot of thought into and evaluate many types before I put one in my bag because the knife in your bug out bag may very well be the only thing you have to depend on one day. Well that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Check out the Serious Survivor channel. We're going to have many more installments on this episode and we're going to try and really build towards different situations. The 5 series of the Apocalypse Tips is going to be geared towards wilderness survival. The 6 series will be geared towards urban survival. We're going to look at different items that we'll need for different situations and different environments and we're going to try and cover a lot of ground here. So I hope you enjoyed the video and for now, Serious Survivor, out. Thank you.